Now, transit. And we was in the elevator together, right? Mm -hmm. And you had to pitch me on why we need mass transit in Nashville, Middle Tennessee. What would that pitch be like? Individual freedoms are directly tied to, to mobility. Okay. Um, bottom line. Okay. Um, I can tell you and, and regale you with stories and anecdotes of how it impacts our health, our access to jobs, mm -hmm. workforce, economic prosperity, equity, um, you name it. Um, but the, in a nutshell, um, individual freedoms are directly tied to mobility. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Slice of the Community. I'm your host, Jerome Moore, and today we have the CEO and President of the Transit Alliance of Middle Tennessee, Jessica Dolphin. How you doing, Jessica? Good, glad to be here. Not glad to have you here. Now, transit. And we was in the elevator together, right? Mm -hmm. And you had to pitch me on why we need mass transit in Nashville, Middle Tennessee. What would that pitch be like? Individual freedoms are directly tied to, to mobility. Okay. Um, bottom line. Okay. Um, I can tell you and, and regale you with stories and anecdotes of how it impacts our health, our access to jobs, mm -hmm. workforce, economic prosperity, equity, um, you name it. Um, but the, in a nutshell, um, individual freedoms are directly tied to mobility. So I, I want to go a little to your background a little bit, right? I know we talked about like you growing up in the rural area mm -hmm. of Tennessee and just how like like you've seen transit because you, you don't have an engineering degree, you don't have a planning degree, mm -hmm. but you're entrenched in this thing that we really need, which is transit. Tell us a little bit of that background story because I just think it, it also connects uh, the rural and like kind of urban areas and how transit is important and how it affects us all, albeit maybe on a little different levels. I mean, you just nailed that, right? It, it, transit affects us all, yeah. our ability to be mobile. Um, growing up on a dirt road in South Cheatham County in Pegram, Tennessee, um, and then Kingston Springs, mm -hmm. I didn't have the ability to walk anywhere if there wasn't someone with a car that could take me into right. town, as we used to call it, go to town. Um, in then the I town. In That's the like you the know town. Town. Then, we, then town. I wasn't going. Um, <laughs> so if there wasn't a school bus to take me to school, then I wasn't going. So okay. um, I really got firsthand experience about how access mm -hmm. or inaccess or not having access to mm -hmm. opportunity can really affect a person. Yeah. And so um, that equity piece, uh, that justice piece, right? I want you to, mm -hmm. I want you to speak on that. Like, when, like, cause we hear like justice and a lot of times it's like around like criminal mm -hmm. legal justice, you know, housing justice, but like what, how does, how does transit connect to justice? Okay. Yeah. Um, I do have a friend, her name is Ashley Northington and she does, and she can tell you um, from her heart mm -hmm. what that means. And she's, she said, transit is justice. Mm. And ever since she said that, I want, I want to give her the quote. Yeah, um, transit is justice. Transit is justice because, um, as we've said, it's directly tied to individual freedoms. Okay. It, it, it is for every person. Mm -hmm. um, and, and when you think of justice, it's, it's really the a equitable access to opportunities, right? Okay. So um, if we're talking strictly economic prosperity, mm -hmm. all right, we live in an area that is car centric. Mm -hmm. So we don't live in 15 minute cities. I can't walk um, from, I don't know where I live in Bellevue 15 minutes and get to a really high paying job right. in theory. I have to use my car. Okay. So if I have to own, operate, buy a car mm -hmm. in order to participate in the economy, it's not an equitable economy right. because not everyone's able to participate. Right. Um, and beyond that, like if I if I have to get in in a single occupancy vehicle or a vehicle that I own and operate or pay um, right. a, a ride share, for instance, um, to get even to some educational opportunities or training opportunities to further my ability mm -hmm. to um, increase my economic prosperity for myself and my family. Right. That's not equitable. Right. So in, 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 in the very basic terms of, of justice, in terms of equal opportunity right. for success, right. transit is, you know, queen. Yeah, queen. <laughs> hey, like, I'm with it. I'm for it. Hey, hey, let, like, 
look, I'm, I'm, I have no problems there, right? We in when is it what Women's uh, History Month anyway, right? Like so, I'm. Thank you. I, it's, it's, I'm, no, no, no complaint from me. <laughs> um, when we talk about mass transit, right, and kind of going back to that urban rural kind of connection, right? Mm -hmm. How does having mass transit in Davidson County um, positively affect the other surrounding counties in Middle Tennessee? Well, making it easier to get around while you're here. Yeah. Um, so we do have a regional transit system. Um, fun fact, Tennessee is, I think, is one of the few states that has public transit in every county. Okay. Um, it may not look like a big 40-foot bus, yeah. um, but we have, it's available. Okay. Um, we have several re uh, transit agencies in the region. Okay. So, you know, there's the Rover in Murfreesboro, Franklin Transit in Franklin, okay. uh, Clarksville Transit System in, in Clarksville, Montgomery County, um, and even Columbia has the Mule Town Trolley. So there, you have accessible um, mass transit. Mm -hmm to a degree around the region. And then the Regional Transit Authority, uh, the WeGo Regional Transit Authority where mm -hmm. operates WeGo Star that goes from Lebanon into Nashville. Okay. Um, also from Dixon <clears throat> into Nashville, you know, just from the region to mm -hmm. Franklin, Murfreesboro, we have the big pike extensions there. Um, you can jump on one of those and come in, for mm -hmm. instance, and say that Nashville has a super robust, convenient, affordable, frequent, um, operable system here mm -hmm. that you can tie into. Um, imagine being able to get from those outer line counties into mm -hmm. Nashville and not need a car. Right, yeah. Right, you could um, work anywhere in Davidson County essentially, right. um, or shop, or right. visit restaurants, cafes, whatever you, whatever have you, go to sporting events, go, right. go to concerts, right. um, and not need to drive in on 40, 24, or 65. How do we, especially those that, that are from Nashville, right, especially like myself, right, I've always been a car city, people love their car, right, mm -hmm. but also like myself, I've been able to live abroad uh, and experience like high level, like mass transit, like China, for example, mm -hmm. right? How do we get residents in Nashville, right, who hasn't experienced that and just really love their cars to really see and understand how, like, mass transit and efficient transit is something that we really need? And we're not trying to say don't drive, right? That's, right. Not, it, that's not what we're trying to say, but we're trying to say, hey, there's, there should be other options for other people who may not have a car, can't afford a car, or just need... Uh, uh, a better way to access maybe food uh, or maybe in, in jobs or maybe other things that they don't have in walking distance or in median proximity mm -hmm. to where they live. Okay. Um, this this is uh, um, one of the things I think that we've been struggling with the most because okay. it, it, it's a, you're, you're, you're addressing a few things. It's, it's cultural. Okay. We're car centric. You nailed it. Yeah. You, you said that already. Um, we're not trying to do away with cars. Right. I just want to say that, like, I want to reiterate what you said. <laughs> we are not, this is not a war on cars. Just keep your car. I love my car. Yeah. Right? I used to love driving. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really love driving anymore, but, you know, traffic really right. yeah. pressed that out of me. There was a time in Nashville when we didn't have a greenway. Yeah. Right? Right. Someone had to bring that to the city. And it was a brave council member, okay? And when he did, there was pushback. People didn't want it. Oh yeah, we don't want we no don't green want that. pastures and nice walks and smell the nice air. Well, they, it wasn't thinking like that. <laughs> yeah. They weren't thinking of these beautiful le leisurely oh, walks oh, on a linear park. Oh, let me guess. We don't want certain people coming into our to our areas that maybe you know that don't live here. Oh, it was those people. It was those people coming into our neighborhood. We don't. We, we're. It's the unknown, Jerome. Mm. So we oftentimes will eschew or uh, uh, the unknown. Mm -hmm. And I think transit is is faced with that same sort of. Uh, initial feeling right. but what happens is you get that that you get that one <coughs> proof of concept out there that mm -hmm. one greenway and then all of a sudden right people see it right. they can use it they hear stories so mm -hmm. maybe I lived in an area that wasn't close to the greenway but I kept seeing how awesome it was or hearing how awesome it was from right. friends who were able to use it and then I want one right and I think that's what we ha we're, we're faced with here in, with transit. We, we somehow have to get something in the ground mm -hmm. because 
and that's not to say we don't have an excellent transit system right, right now. WeGo does an excellent job for the money they get mm -hmm. because they're not um, evergreen, right. right? They have to come to the city every year and say, We need this in a budget. Yes, and they have to defend it. It's not even as simple as, <laughs> right, them getting Look the outside. money. Right? Like, they're like, no, we need this, right. um, and here's why. Yeah. And and so, for what for what we have, we go it does an excellent job. Right. I mean, top notch. And if I, if I if I remember like just like from the research I did, like we go is like historically like been kind of underfunded. It is historically underfunded. Yeah. And, and you know, Nashville, and, and to be fair, is <laughs> transit in, in the United States, I. I would say has been underfunded yeah. from the get-go because we, I think as a, as a country, we prefer cars, mm -hmm. you know? Um, Especially in the, in, the, in the South, right? And let's bring it back to Nashville. Yeah. I wanted, to, and, and this is the whole Greenway anecdote, um, but here's the thing. Um, we are, and you may have been feeling this too, really feeling uh, collectively mm -hmm. very grumpy about the exponential growth we have been experiencing. Yeah. Right? We're in the pot that is boiling. Right. Over with growth, population, job right. growth, you name it, um, tra um, tourist right. growth. Right, tourism, yeah. Right. So there's no reason we have to remain grumpy about it. Right. We just need to invest in managing it. Right. And adding more uh, active transportation modes mm -hmm. is a tool right. that we have available to us whenever we opt right. to pull that tool into our, our tool belt. I want to talk about money. <clears throat> and I want to talk about money in two different ways, right? Okay. Um, the first one I want to talk about money is affordability, right? Um, how much money could people, I'll, I'll put it like this. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, you know, Nashville is already, you know, unaffordable for, for many people, right? Because this cost is it's not a lot of affordable because housing. Because affordability and yeah. transit go hand in hand. Affordability and transit go hand in hand, right? Mm -hmm. So therefore, I may want to work in Nashville, even live in Nashville, um, but I'm going to decide I'm going to live in Murfreesboro because, you know, I can't afford, you know, to live in Nashville at this current moment. However, you know, I may have still have to drive in, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And that might cost me five, six, seven, eight, depending on the vehicle that you have and gas, you know, so you're still paying for transit in that particular way, right? So how would that minimize those costs? Because if you're paying six, $700 extra in gas, right? Mm -hmm. That could go to a mortgage. You probably can afford to live in Nashville, but you might not be able to afford to have a car. That's right. <laughs> and so how does that, affordability piece work in those type of situations, especially for people that's like, okay, I just I just won't live in Nashville, but I just work in Nashville. Are they really saving money? No, unfortunately, that's pretty much a myth. Mm. I think that at one point that may have worked. Okay. But with gas prices over $3 a gallon and mm -hmm. just kind of staying there yeah. and inching into $4 a gallon, yeah. um, with the price of cars now um, through the pandemic, they really went through the roof. Yep, sky high. Um, I, I, I can tell you a few years ago before the pandemic, uh, someone came into our Transit Citizen Leadership Academy, and I can't remember the expert that came in at this point and said this, but they were, they were showing us the data on mm -hmm. the myth of, I'll just move to Murfreesboro mm -hmm. and commute in. Um, you really, um, you wind up paying 70 to 80 cents on the dollar you quote mm. save. Mm. On, for transportation to move right. there, right? And you're losing time because you're spending time sitting on the interstate, right? Right? Right. Or Murfreesboro Pike to come in and then go home. Right. Um, and, and then you've lost, what, two hours a day? Right. If you're an hour in and out. Quality hour. of life. Quality of life. You know that long commutes like that are um, associated with um, higher. Uh, heart disease, diabetes, mm. higher BMIs, and really higher, I didn't... higher divorce rates. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I would think the long car ride, you know, would help relationships. Like, yeah, let me just take my time getting home. <laughs> and I think I even, you know, I just. Wow. Yeah. I mean, our commute. That's can, crazy. Yeah. It's. Transit can save relationships. <laughs> <laughs> 
There's the justice right there. <laughs> transit, can save, that's, transit can save your relationship. <laughs> that's the next campaign. That's the commercial for the campaign. <laughs> and so, okay. So I'm glad we broke that down. Now, let's go to the other funding of, of new transit, right? Mm -hmm. um, we did have a referendum in 2018. Let's move Nashville. It failed, unfortunately, yeah. right? Um, what did you all learn from that referendum, from that campaign, that maybe, you know, things should be different next time? And then I want to pivot into a new referendum, especially during, you know, mayoral elections in a, in a possibly, you know, well, we're going to get a new mayor and how that kind of plays into getting that back, back on a ballot. Um, I think there were a lot of lessons learned, and this also depends on who you talk to. Right. Um, but for for me, what I saw mm -hmm. is the need for really close communication with communities. Okay. Right. People have to know what it is they're talking about, okay. what they're voting on, and what they're paying, what you're asking them to pay for. So it was a lot of miscommunication, probably, like in in what was happening or what what isn't happening right. during that campaign. Because okay. re remember, the campaign was all about. Um, uh, easing congestion, mm -hmm. right? That yeah. was their main uh, tagline. Then you like, then you had like the amp. Then you had that that terminology come in and to play as well. It's like, okay, well now we're getting the amp. But what is that? Right. And and that's new language and education and awareness people have to learn. Okay. It's a lot. Yeah. And and you're and you're and you're you're kind of um, operating under a, a a new law, the Improve Act, okay. that prescribes exactly what. You can and can't do for a referendum for transit funding. That goes into taxes and things like that. And so break that down because yeah. a lot of people feel that you know, okay, the, the money piece. What am I as a as a taxpayer going to have to put into this, mm -hmm. right? But that Improve Act kind of tells you what can be pulled. That's right. Okay. So in 2017, state legislature um, approved, adopted, passed the Im Improve Act. I M P R O V E. Okay, Improve Act. Um, okay. It's a very long and, and tortured acronym, but. Um, so it, it in there is uh, there's the they raised the gas tax, okay. they lowered the grocery tax, they phased out the hall tax, I think, and then they did some enabling legislation that allows cities and counties above a certain population number threshold uh, to take the request for dedicating funding to transit to the voter okay. instead of having to go to the state legisl legislature, okay. right, which is how it had been. Dedicated no. funding. Dedicated that's, funding. That's dedicated funding. Is that what we need? That's what we need. Dedicated funding. Okay. Here's the thing. Can I tell you why we need dedicated funding? Why do we funding? need that dedicated funding? Okay. Because we need to remain competitive for federal dollars. Okay. At its base. Okay. Okay. So um, we get an automatic allocation based on my, road miles and population and blah, blah, blah. So, right. you know, that that is... It, the, that's that. Right. Now, the, and that's typically FHWA or Federal Highway Administration funding. Okay. But the FTA or the Federal Transit Administration also has funding, but typically there's our competitive grants. Okay. Okay. And as you know, when you're vying for federal dollars, mm -hmm. there has to be a local match. Right. Okay. And if you're looking at um, a bus, a bus, Priority, uh, oh my goodness, a transit priority lane, okay. a bus only lane. Okay. Um, for you know five to seven miles, mm -hmm. we'll say it's going to be, and, and this is numbers I don't don't like hold me to this, but <laughs> say it's like four hundred million dollars okay. to build that, right? Um, the local match would be twenty, thirty, or maybe even up to forty percent of that. Okay. Okay, and that's just to build it. Mm. And then once it's built, you've got to own, operate, maintain it. Right, maintenance. Yep. Maintenance, right? And 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 that and and the large, largely that that is also paying our bus operators. Right. Right, handsomely to do their job. Right. Um, that's very important too. I mean, that's bus. Can I just give a shout out to bus operators? Yeah, for, that, yeah. Shout out to them for handling their business yeah. uh, during the pandemic and right. keeping keeping us going because not everyone was able to work from home. Exactly. During the height of the pandemic, we still had 10 to 14,000 people riding buses. That goes in, into in the justice piece. It goes into the That's equity that justice piece. piece. Yeah. Who was able mm. to work from home and who yeah. wasn't? 
right? Right. So we still had people um, heading out to work to mm -hmm. grocery stores and gas stations and to the hospitals. Right. Um, I mean, we needed these people and um, they were able to get back and forth. Where do we rank as bus. far as other cities or states that get this dedicated funding? Like, are, is this like a, we're like a wild last, thing? Or? We're the last one of our size, last city of our size without dedicated the funding. The last one of our okay. size. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, we, you know, why do as Tennessee as a state, we we show like coming in last and a lot of things. Unfortunately, we got to do better. We got <laughs> we got to do better. Um, back to the referendum, mm -hmm. right? Um, unfortunately, there was a scandal that that happened during the 2018 with Megan, uh, former mayor Megan Barry. Mm -hmm. um, did that shift things you feel uh, during that mayoral administration, what was going on and kind of taking a lot of the yeah, I think awareness away from the... I've heard anecdotally, and I wasn't in the rooms at the time. Right. I was the associate director of the Transit Alliance, so I, that was above my pay grade. But mm -hmm. I have heard anecdotally um, the polling before that was favorable to it passing. Mm. Um, Mayor Barry was extremely charismatic. She had a high confidence rate. People really... Uh, loved mm -hmm. her and and um, believed in her, right. and, and she was the champion right. of of Let's Move Nashville. Um, so I think that that did um, unfortunately have a negative effect on the outcome. It helps because we are a mayor driven like kind of city, right? Very very Mar strong mayor. Yeah. Marriage. Um, why didn't we have more champions during that time in 2018, and how do we? get more champions. Hopefully the new mayor will be a champion, but also mm -hmm. others um, that have some decision-making power or influence. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's what that's what we need. We right. need the people with decision-making power and influence to get right. on in, in this issue and get involved and really start um, pulling or pushing it. Right. Um, so, yeah, I don't know why they, they didn't. Again, that was above yeah. my pay grade at the time. Right. I, I was just kind of a fly on the wall. I was aware right. and paying attention right. um, when I was around, but I, wa I wasn't in any capacity well, making this decision. Because I think like most people will agree we need like we need transit, right? Um, clearly, especially at this point. Right. Um, well, can I just say, go ahead. You know, we were told 10 years ago, hey, we're going to be a, a region of over 2 million people. Wow. Right. And what did we do? Nothing. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. So now we're being told, hey, we're, we're going to be a region of over 3 million people. It's coming. Like within like about 20, 30, 20? Um, I would, uh, the next 10 or 20 years or so, uh, I'd have to go back. Yeah, and look, 20, yeah 30, so, 20, wow. So we have fair warning is huh. my point. And we had fair warning. So an extra million people. Another million people. Yeah. And that's, your, that's wow. And that's regional. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we're over huh. 2 million today. Right. Which is just wild to think about. Yeah. So our infrastructure, our transit and road infrastructure was fine mm -hmm. when we were under a million. Right. Right. But now we're over two million and we're staring down over three million um, in the coming years. So right. we have time to correct and prepare. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do? So I think that's a great question that I guess we need to be asking our mayoral candidates at this particular time, right? Early voting is in July, actual voting is in August, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be a runoff and that happens in September, right? If, if well, what, 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 what should we say to our voters, right? What is the, or what should our voters be asking these mayoral candidates while they're on the mayoral campaigns, participate in these forums, and why they have close access and proximity to what what are some three or four things that we should be asking these mayoral candidates as far as gauging how they feel or don't feel about transit and, and dedicated funding mm -hmm. uh, specifically to transit um you know ask them their priorities what, what are your top three priorities for nashville mm -hmm. you know where do you see us going um just to see how it ranks okay because that if if um if it's important to them, it'll rank up there. Right. I think for over 80% of, of regional population, it ranks. Right. Right. So let's just see where they are. Um, and then what's your vision for mobility in Nashville? Where do you see us headed? You know? Yeah. Um, getting, 
what is, what is your transportation plan? And, and transportation is a large umbrella of things. Right. That's anywhere from your own personal vehicle to freight to buses and, and trains to micro mobility and right. bikes, bikes and, and walking right. those, that's sidewalks everything everything yep. right so that's that's the big umbrella what's your vision for transportation and mobility um, and then the the third thing would be like how do you propose we fund it yeah right because it's one thing can I just tell you um, Nashville has probably could stock a small library with mm -hmm. the number of plans and studies we've done <laughs> on corridor streets, sidewalks, yeah. safety, bike lanes, and, and greenways, right? We have that right. ready to go. It's been studied and, and looked at by experts. Right. So um, the, the, where's the, that's money? right. Like where's the dough? Where it always yeah. like comes to a screeching halt <laughs> is the funding. Yeah. We need that funding. Yeah, we need that dedicated funding. Mm, we need that dedicated funding. And so, and that, I think, <clears throat> I think this is important to point this out too. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not gonna get any cheaper, <laughs> right? Like, like, Preach. like, it's not gonna yeah. get any cheaper. And, and so, for those people who may be worried about having to pay, like now, well, it's gonna be more expensive later. So you want your kids to pay higher prices? And so you're going to want your grandkids to pay for it or you want them to move away because they don't want to live here because they can't get anywhere because that's what we're yeah. looking at. I think those are our options. And I hate to sound like Chicken Little, but at some point mm -hmm. it will become too much. Are we going to sit on our hands mm. yeah. and wait for that pain point to become mm -hmm. too much to where we're like, uh oh, people are leaving. Now what are we going to do? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or do we proactively say, I see the issue here. Right. And we got to make a tough decision. Right. What can people do to start being a part of that conversation today? Right. Because I think we, we see the challenges. We uh, people are experiencing them firsthand. Mm -hmm. How can they how can they be engaged like yesterday to figure <laughs> out more <laughs> to really figure out like to get a better understanding of like what mass transit is, go through that educational piece, go through that awareness piece, and then be able to talk and ask, okay, how this how does this affect me? How can it how can it benefit me or benefit my neighbors? Yeah. Right? Um, and how it intersects with other things or other people's and their daily journeys that, you know, I may not experience, I might not, you know, I might not have, I have a different type of privilege. Mm -hmm. Like, how can they start that process? You just gave a commercial for the Transit Citizen Leadership Academy. Oh. <laughs> Which is something. <laughs> <laughs> I just give a commercial today, Yeah, no, you, know? you are a natural. <laughs> so the Transit Citizen Leadership Academy uh, is something that the Transit Alliance is known for. We've been hosting it since 2010. Okay. We, we're having our, we're hosting our 25th TCLA later this year. You can okay. go to my website, thetransitalliance.org. Okay. Find out more information about it. Register. It's free to attend. Um, we want to have a big class this year. It's mm -hmm. eight weeks long. We get two weeks off. Um, experts come and give these presentations, okay. allowing you time to ask them your questions and really sit and internalize this information, synthesizing it right. um, for, for you. Um, but in the media, because that's in the fall, right, right now is like, like you said, we have a mayoral campaign going on. Man, mm -hmm. dig into that. There's right. mayoral forums happening probably almost on the daily between <laughs> right. now and July, through July. Yeah. So I, I know that one is coming up on June 7th. Mm -hmm. um, that's co-hosted with Civic Design Center, Transit Alliance, Urban Housing Solutions, Neighbor to Neighbor, okay. um, and Walk Bike Nashville. We're going to be asking them particularly about affordability and transportation and infrastructure. Okay. Um, there might be another one also popping up here and there, but um, pay attention to that. Okay. And 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 go to the mayoral forums. Go yeah. ask them yourself. Tweet them or whatever. Ask yeah. what, what's going on. But if you want to get in into the the decision making and transportation, mm -hmm. the uh, Greater Nashville Regional Council or GNRC.org mm -hmm. is a great place to start because okay. they are a regional organization that helps allocate funding to transportation projects okay. around the region. Okay. So look at what that what's going on there. They're they host public meetings, uh, mm -hmm. I think the third Wednesday of the month. Um, RTA meetings, it's through We Go Regional okay. uh, bus, public meetings, mm -hmm. for, um, third Wednesday of the month, I believe, also. Um, we Go Nashville, yeah. <laughs> like the MTA. The MTA, We yeah. Go um, also has public meetings yeah. um, monthly, fourth Thursday of the month at 2.30. Okay. You can look at their website to get so more information. There's a lot going on. A lot of, pub lot of public meetings going. Council, Nashville, uh, right. you know, council members, 
public comment period, mm -hmm. like get out there, make your comment, email your elected officials, tweet right. them and say, yo, this is important to me. Right. Here's why. You don't have to have canned language. You're right. People, these are your neighbors, right. right? Who, our council members aren't in DC. They're right here, they live here. They yeah. want to talk to you. They want to hear your authentic voice yeah. and hear about your experience. What, what, what are some immediate actions or things that, okay, we might not be able to, to build an amp or get the subways and all that like right now today, but what are some things immediately that, I, that, could, that could help our transit situation, like fixing potholes? <laughs> or, you know, is it a dedicated <clears throat> lane for we go? Like, what are some of those things that, that people could be advocating for, talking to their council members, that is more of on a, um, a micro kind of yeah. ask? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Use your authentic voice. Like, yeah. My daily commute consists of this, that, and the other thing. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a stop sign down at this intersection. Okay. Be vocal. There's Hub Nashville for that kind of stuff too. If you yeah. if you if you're looking to solve those kind of very hyper local things. Yeah. But if you're looking at, you know, I can't. I feel weird about letting my kid play out in the front yard, for instance, because people speed down yeah. my down my street. Hub Nashville, in dot. You're elected. Your your council member. Okay. Talk to them about it. And, and see what they can do. If you're looking at, you know, their your particular bus route yeah. for, from, for some particular reason, you, you want to improve somehow, call WeGo. They have an okay. excellent customer service line. Come to the public meeting, give your public comment. Uh, even if you have want to sing the praises of WeGo, come give public comment. Right. I'm on a WeGo board. I would love to hear that, yeah. right? Um, um, help us improve the service and and give accolades when the service is good. Yeah. Um, so and, just don't and just complain. Make it public. Just come come and and be intentional about building better transit. Yeah. And know. just know yeah. that if 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 there's a struggle along the way, it's probably not because uh, the transit agency doesn't want to provide a good service. Right. It's because they lack the, the funding, funding to make it right. Superior, right, right. That's and and uh, and and I think that I've had this conversation before with, with someone. It might have been you, but like world class city like Nashville. That's what we're missing. That's that's what <laughs> we, if really we get deserve. Mass, a if, world -class if we if, if we get system. the mass transit that we rightfully deserve and need, right? Yeah. Like we will be a world class city. And that's I think one. If not the like, of course we need affordable housing and, and things like that too. But tie, but that ties into transit. But if we can, mm -hmm. if we can get that. I think like that'll be we'll be top notch, right? Right. But what is Jessica's vision for transit here? Jessica's vision for transit is that no one should be um, held back uh, for their inability um, to get from one place to another, mm. right? Right. So whether that's I need from my health, I need to get to my doctor's office or yeah. for uh, to make more money, I need to get education and training or okay. a better job access or um, I'm from my mental health. I need to be accessing social engagements. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what the reason is why I need to get from one place to another. Yeah. But really, I shouldn't be held hostage because of my inability to afford a car. Mm. Right. Right. Um, I would love, I would love, and I envision a future of Middle Tennessee of being able to live in Murfreesboro, Franklin, or Spring Hill, you right. know what I mean? Yeah. Or anywhere in the 10 county region and, and not really having to own a car or being able to be a one car family, even that far out. Right. Because we're so well connected with mass transit, mm -hmm. micro mobility, and our connected network of sidewalks and bike lanes would make it so we could do that. Right. And dedicated and, funding. And that it, well, we can't get there <laughs> yeah, without dedicated, dedicated funding. funding. Yeah. Um, that, that's, that's key. Mm -hmm. There, I mean, you know, say whatever, but there will be no transformative mobility infrastructure without it. Mm. I think that's a perfect line to end on. Jessica, I really <laughs> appreciate your time. Um, and hopefully people go to that website. Mm -hmm. and people reach out and really start digging into the transit and start having a conversation like today. Yes. And right now, before, it's 10 years too late and it's more expensive and it's even a more of a headache for everybody. And thank you all for watching another episode of Slice of the Community. See y'all next time.